listening to Unofficially Black, Rob Lee here again with Just Greg and... Just underscore Greg. You, you changed it. Uh, we're, we're back uh, with this, <laughs> this last segment of our show um, with a guest. Uh, two, to be exact. Two um, guests. These are the owners of a really dope spot. You see how crispy I'm looking right now? Delicious, you know, beard lined up and everything. I go to a spot uh, called Our Spot, to be exact. Uh, so I have the, the owners of our spot on with me uh, and Greg, uh, <laughs> me and Greg, uh, this evening. So I want to um, introduce you to the owners of our spot. Uh, are you there? Oscar. Yes, yes, yes. We're here. I'm Oscar, and, and I have Belinda with me. Belinda, say hi. Hello, Baltimore. Big shout-outs, big shout-outs. I want to thank you, too, for, um, for joining us. And tell... Uh, me, Greg, and the mean streets of Baltimore City, our, our listeners, more about our spot and what the goal is and what the mission is and more, more about health in the black community and how you guys are contributing to that. Good. Yes. Well, thanks for having us on. This is Linda. Um, so the concept for our spot started about, mm, I want to say, about two years ago when Oscar was working as a barber in someone else's barber shop in South Point. And I was in massage school at the time. And as a massage student, I legally can't, uh, well, back then, I couldn't charge for massage services. Um, but I had to provide some services to get enough hours and also to practice. So I set up a chair at his barber shop, or at the shop where he was working, rather, for Father's Day and wanted to offer free five-minute chair massage for all the dead. And, you know, as a, as a, as a young black man, you understand there's, there's been a stigma around alternative medicine, especially around massage, and a lot of misunderstanding uh, because of the way it's portrayed in, in media of what massage is and what it isn't. Sure. Um, but basically, mm -hmm. it's the idea that, you know, oh, that's, that's for girls and that's for women. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll, get, my, I'll get my wife a massage, but you know, not, not for the men themselves. So, it took about an hour and a half or so to finally get the first man in my chair. But once I did, I was busy for four hours. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and it was nonstop after that, you know. And, and what did it take to get that man in the chair? It took Oscar, the trusted barber, telling guys in their ear, hey, you should try out the massage. Nah, you know, that's, that's girl stuff. No, it's not. You should try it out, you know. It's, it's really nice. You should try it. And since there's already the trust in the black and brown community with your barber and the barber shop being a place of masculinity. Um, a, staple, a staple in the community. Absolutely. Oh. So if, if men are already coming, so it's like double faceted. One is men are already coming to the shop and they feel safe there. Right? And two, men by and large, you know, this might be a blanket statement, but there is some truth to it, are creatures of convenience. Yes. So yes. You, know, if you do everything in one place, that's even better. You know, so, you know, it's, it's, it's just like that. It's being able to meet the community where they are and then provide these services that they might not see in other places or in places where they might not go because they're not as comfortable. There, you know, there exists a spot already in the city where this kind of thing is happening. It's been there for like eight years, and they have six floors and a tailor and a pool hall and this and that. We're not about that. We're everyday people. That's that's one of the things that I found uh, that I find rather very um, alluring about our spot. It's mm -hmm. a little bit of everything. It is that convenience that one is very hospitable. You know, I feel like oh, I could just chill here and be here for hours. This is this is great. But then in addition to that, it's like all right, I need to go here and get this acupuncture done. Oh, massage would be great as well. Oh, I'm looking a little shaggy. Let me get this cut. And I feel like I, well, I know for one, you guys offer all of those services. Um, we do. What else do you offer to, you know, to the community in terms of service and in terms of uh, just being a integral part of like small business community? Because I saw you guys on IG yesterday and at the city hall and all. So definitely speak on that a little bit. Yeah. Well, um, outside of the the barbering, the massage, and the acupuncture piece. Um, Pretty much, we are what, what we would like to consider a grooming and wellness center. So we have um, we have Reiki uh, practitioners, uh, Reiki masters, 
in place that deal with uh, energy work and energy shifting and alignment, chakra realignment and stuff like that. Um, but just a whole holistic wellness in the sense of um, when we think about when we think about taking care of self and taking care of of the overall person, we have we have that whole spiritual component, right? right. Where where you you sit down and you look at okay, outside of grooming and looking good and all that good stuff, then we need to target that 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 spiritual piece where we start building up from the inside out um, because there's a lot of healing that needs to happen in the city um, amongst our people. Right. So we look at the head, mind, body, and spirit as a whole. So outside of the grooming piece, you're going to come in and get groomed, but at the same time, you know what? Let's look at these other areas where we're really not focusing on or we're not even taking time out for ourselves to to actually target and focus on. Right, like, for example, um, people come in and they're always looking at the art on the wall. Yeah, that, that's a five-minute respite from whatever chaos is happening out there on these streets. You know, you, you just got a fresh cut. You know, you might have sat in my massage chair and got a little chair massage, and then you're like, oh, wait, but look at this dope art. Right. Oh, all these are black and brown artists? Oh, really? We've got this kind of talent in our city? Like, things like that. Oh, yeah. they, they seem small, but they're pretty significant. I, I, I dig that, and I, I think that, you know, our spot is a really great part, and I am here to support however way that I can. I go there every two weeks. I bring whoever I come with. My brother is there with me today, and... Um, very forest bias. Yes, very, very fubu. With the fubu reference. And yeah, thank you for coming through. Yeah, absolutely. But in fact, speaking to speak on that, right, right. Yeah. Um, one of the conversations I was having earlier today with uh, a couple of uh, of my clients is the the whole scheduling piece, right? Yeah. Because as you know, I have the scheduling app. Set up your appointments. Take out that time to to. You know, just focus on self, right? Yeah. A lot of the brothers, they're not, how can I say, um, they're not, I don't even know how to explain it. They're just not there, right? They're yeah. like, well, I don't even know what that means. You know, because we come from that, from that culture where you go to a barber shop, hey, how many heads do you have? Okay, right. I'll be willing to sit here two, three, five hours to get a haircut. And my whole thing is, is if we take out time, right, yeah. for ourselves and, and stop looking at grooming and taking care of ourselves as the last priority, like, oh, I have time now, let me go get a haircut, and we start scheduling ourselves and say, hey, you know what, this is something that I need to do for myself, then hopefully it starts changing the dynamic from a, from a mental standpoint, organizational standpoint, to where we start getting more control over how we function, what we're doing, right. how we're doing, freeing up our space, and then just organizing our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, which I think ultimately trickles down into the way that we function with each other as a whole, mm -hmm. um, how we function with our family, how we function with our people in the community. Right. I, I, mean, I agree with that. Because if you think about it, go ahead, I'm sorry. I, I agree with that. Um, we're going to have to uh, kind of wrap up in a bit. We're coming up against our um, our next segment. So, what I want to do is, can we? Uh, uh, I want to get your your the address for our spot and your social media stuff. And I want to thank you guys for coming on. But what, where can he find um, your shop and where can he find you online? Also, is there any events that are coming up that you want to? Oh, I didn't get that last bit. Good. Yeah, I'll say, up, also, sorry. is there anything that you want to promote, also including your shop, also, like any events that you believe that needs to be promoted or highlighted? Well, we do have a pop up on Saturday. We're going to be featuring the the uh, kids from Baltimore Youth Art. They're making some Valentine's related products, and so come out and support them. All of the art, all of the products that we have for sale at the shop are 100% commission free. All the money, when you buy those things, they go right back to the makers and the artists themselves. We don't keep any of that. Um, that's so that's something that we definitely wanted to, um, to, to say. And so we can, you can find us at um, 
783 Washington Boulevard and on Facebook and Instagram at Our Spot Be More. Yes. And our website is OurSpotBeMore.com. So okay. pretty simple, straight and forward. You can set up appointments that way. Um, see what we got going on. We're constantly doing something different. We provide a community space as well for people to come in, um, you know, provide different uh, sessions on, on um, you know, maybe finances, um, what else? Um, Herbalism, nutrition, and all of these things. So, yeah, definitely check it out on, on the website and IG because, like he said, we've always got things going on. That's, that's a bad. I, I thank you again for coming on. and um, He will bring me down there one day. No promises. Um, yeah, it was, it was really great. Um, and I will see you guys probably next week. <laughs> All right. Yes, that was good. We absolutely. look forward to it. Yes, and it would be lovely to have you over also, bud. So thank you. come on through. We got to. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, good night, have guys. Have a good night, guys. Good night. Yeah, have a good one. That was uh, Oscar and um, that was awesome. Belinda from our spot. Uh, you they, didn't tell me it was that good. Oh, they're, they're, they're the shit. Uh, they were just playing like freestyle music like all day. So we were jamming <sighs> out and it was, uh, I mean, they got like the dope paint everywhere. They have a graffiti wall in the back that you could tag when you go in there. Oh, wow. It, it's a dope setup. Um, so we're going to wrap up because uh, yeah. we're up against it. Uh, we have maybe one thing I guess we'll close out on. If, if you, you have that K, that uh, video thing. And we'll cl- probably close out on that. Yeah, we can. What, what, who are these white people you looking at? I'm not looking at white people. Are you being a sucker again? No. Since Valentine's Day is coming up, right? I, I, I want to say this before uh, we get this to that. This Negro. <laughs> Fucking Greg is a sucker. Like, in, 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 in the best type. Like, Greg's a good guy. But, but Greg, Greg pays. With his soul, with his heart, man. What are your Valentine's Day plans, man? It's coming up. Real quick. Valentine's Real quick, Day? man. What are your Valentine's Day plans? Black Panther. That's the only thing that matters to me. That's not on the 14th, is it? That's huh? the 16th. So? So that's after Valentine's Day. Explain. There is no plans for Valentine's Day. It's called Black Panther. All right, just making sure. Black Hearts? <laughs> Actually, no. That's going to be the 15th for me. I'm going on the 15th. Are oh, you going on the 15th? You going yeah. early? Yeah. So, so no Valentine's Day plans? No Valentine's Day plans. I'll be wearing my red tie. Your red suit? Yeah. Listening to R. Kelly step in the name of love? Fuck no. <laughs> I'll be listening to something very sexy. Oh, I, I don't know what. Yeah. Jodeci? No, it'd be like, no, it's gonna be like something off a of Purple Rain, motherfucker. Oh, okay. Or maybe Dirty Mind. Not probably Dirty Mind. Okay. Yeah. Maybe uh, Lady Cab. Dr- no, let's get married. That's what I'm gonna be listening to. Interesting. Yeah. So I want to say I want to fuck the taste out of your mouth. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I, I've said that pre coitus motherfucker. That's wow. when my red tie comes into play. So uh, I think stuff in the name of love should be in there somewhere. No, like you come down the stairwell, and you listen to it. You mean stumble in the name of love, my man? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll wrap up then. Yeah. For just Greg. Just Greg. I'm Rob Lee, and what's the first step in the being being a black? Are you black, black? Black. There is no step one. All right. So this was uh, unofficially black. Check us out uh, on Facebook. Avoid the food and liquor. All right, Luke Bay fiasco. Fuck out of here. You know, kick push. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. <laughs>